Hey everyone, my name is Royce and I'm a second year MD PhD student at UPenn. This will be my third video in my Clerkships for Real series. It's pretty crazy that it's already been three weeks in my clerkships. It feels much shorter, like two and a half weeks or something. So yeah, again today I'm in a chrysanthemum mood, so I will be having my delicious chrysanthemum tea with uh, goji berries. The plastic bag makes it seem like it's something else, but I assure you it's just goji berries. I'm really excited to drink this tea. Typically during the week, I don't really get to drink water or nourish myself. And so um, Sundays are a good day of the week for me to just get seven days worth of uh, fluids into me. So in this video, I wanna talk about surgical skills. Probably the coolest thing I've done so far is be able to operate the robots they use in surgery. The attending was going ham, you know, closing up. And then once it was done, he stood up and looked at me and he was like, hey Royce, you wanna give it a go? And uh, all the operation was done at this point. Uh, so I wasn't able to do any of the cutting, which is probably a very good thing. But what I could do was I could like move the hands around, clamp them, touch tissue and get a feel for what everything kind of felt like. So that was probably the highlight of medical school for me. I don't think ever in my career I will do robotic surgeries in the future. So it's really cool to be able to say that I've used the robotic hands and manipulated actual tissue in a living human being before. That's kind of, I mean, I can't even wrap my brain around it. The attending was telling to me, um, in like a very instructive tone, uh, the incisions for the surgery are gonna be like this long and this deep. And I was like, okay, sure, that's that's pretty cool, I guess. And then he was like, okay, here you go. And then he hands me the scalpel. And I was so shocked and nervous when he handed it to me. So that was the first time I made incisions in a human. I mean, legally. I've been able to place a few fully urinary catheters that was in both male and female patients. And I'm really glad that my Google image studying of the variations in external genitalia has really paid off. Another highlight of my life was cutting off someone's appendix. Take a stapler tool, feed it in through one of the holes in the abdomen, and then you put it around the neck of the appendix. Once you pull the trigger of the tool, it produces two lines of staples and cuts right in between. So then the end product is a stapled off appendix, a stapled off and sealed colon. You know, when my appendix ruptured, it caused me a lot of pain and suffering. And so it was really nice to get some payback by cutting off this appendix. I've gotten a lot of suturing practice and I'm actually really proud of how quickly I can tie the knots. I remember one of the first times I sutured, that was in urology, and it was on a very, you know, urology thing, which is the scrotum. I remember um, the resident talked me through how to do it, you know, moving the wrist, pulling out the needle, and then finally tying off the knots. Once it was all said and done, you know, you can kind of take a step back and see the, the artwork that you've created. I said to the resident, I did actually a really good job of reapproximating scrotal tissue. And I've been able to sew up actual important skin that people care about, uh, like the abdominal uh, skin. Each time you suture, like you can feel yourself getting exponentially better. And I remember after I finished the suturing, I was super proud of myself. The edges of the skin were super aligned and snug. It's really nice to have the suturing practice on an actual human patient. And uh, I was really tempted by the end of it to uh, ask for the scalpel again and make some more incisions so I could keep practicing. And I was really flattered by the resident who even said that I have actually really steady hands and that maybe I should be a surgeon. Um, and I politely lied to her and said, yeah, totally. No, but actually though, I've been thinking about this a lot and I really do like surgery as a concept and in practice, but when it comes to the actual training length, so hours per day and then total years, it's actually very difficult. And especially because I'm MD-PhD and that alone is you know, gonna be eight years right there, it's tough to be able to say to myself and to my fiance that I can really invest like another six, seven, eight years to becoming a surgeon. And these are really intense years. Wow, these goji berries are delicious. I'm happy I made this video because these are once in a lifetime experiences that I am trying my best to cherish because, you know, who knows if I'll do surgery. If I do do surgery, I will probably do something like ophthalmology where the training length is a lot shorter, the lifestyle's a lot better. To me, you know, seeing my kids and seeing my future wife is actually really important to me. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Hope you guys found this interesting. I'll see you guys next week.